friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca. I'm a writer, avid storyteller, graduate school student, and today we're going to be talking about my February reading recap and the books that I want to tackle for March. Now, I think before I kind of jump into everything, when it comes to book reviews and reader opinion, I think it's really important to kind of provide a little bit of context as to me as a reader and a person and why some of these things didn't work, some of these books didn't work for me, and kind of what I'm looking for when I'm reading a book and how that kind of shapes my opinion um, afterwards. I am an, a huge horror buff. I love a spooky thriller. I love a ghost story. I love horror. And I think a close runner up in terms of genre is fantasy. I love a good fantasy story and so um, I really enjoy character driven stories so like if the plot is so so but the characters are really strong and they're kind of driving everything forward I love that a lot of these stories that's kind of the the baseline for which I will be kind of like reviewing them so without further ado let's get into the books that I read for February February was a really weird month for me in terms of reading. I think especially because in January I read four books, which is insane. I think that's tied with the most I've ever read uh, with October from 2023 being the last time I read four books in a month. So February was a little bit sluggish. I think I got into a little bit of a slump and the two books that I picked out, which you've seen in some of my vlogs, eh. So the first book that I want to start with is Hidden Pictures by Jason Rikulik. I think that's how you say this name. This was good. I give this like a good three out of five stars. I think this is a really good like summer spooky thriller book. So the premise of this book, uh, Mallory Quinn is like fresh out of rehab. She's a young woman um, and she goes to nanny for this rich family in Springbrook, New Jersey. And Teddy, the boy that she's nannying, starts drawing some really freaky stuff. And so the story is just finding out like what's going on. I kind of struggled to get into it. And when I'm struggling with a book before I, I do not finish it, um, I will try everything I can to get into it. So I actually started listening to the audiobook. I rented the audiobook from Libby um, and that helped. I would put it like on the car when I'm driving or like when I'm doing the dishes and it kind of helped me get into the story. If you can hear the beeping and honking, I apologize. Uh, so I would put it on whenever I was doing my errands or stuff like that to kind of get through it because I was having such a hard time just kind of sitting and reading and getting into it. Except for when I got to about this far through the book, one morning I just decided to like power through and it got to a point where I was like really into it and I finished it in like two hours or something like that. I just... It, it got me near the end like I was like okay now I'm eating this up I think the characters are cool again I the plot twist doesn't have to be anything like crazy for me to enjoy it I just feel like it has to like push the story forward and that definitely did it in this book was it a favorite mm. would I recommend it mm. I think it might be like a fun beach read oddly enough like if you like like a like a spooky beach read sure but I was a little disappointed I like it was good but I, I wanted more from it the second book that I read in February is like on the total opposite end of the spectrum it's Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin I watched the movie over the pandemic I went on like a huge horror movie like binge spree and so that was the first time I'd read this book if you've never read the book um or don't know anything about the story it's essentially about this young couple Rosemary and Guy and they're moving into this new building and the building's weird the building's kind of like creepy haunted well not haunted but it's a very creepy building with very creepy tenants and so it follows Rosemary like in her journey to get pregnant and like everything that happens and to me this is the epitome of a scary story like this is so good like more than like the exorcist which i read last month or in january this has everything the pacing is immaculate the characters are great the heroine is like not stupid like she understands that there's something going on but she had like the one person that she needs that believed her was like i don't want to ruin it if you haven't read it or watched it but it's like there's such a feeling of helplessness that I think is so hard to 
like replicate in a lot of other it's just so good this is like a five out of five star read for me and it's a relatively short book I could have finished this in one sitting um but I started it kind of late at night so I finished it in two days it was so good it was such a fun spooky read and I don't think I'd recommend this if you're like starting to get into horror like if you're very like squeamish about certain things maybe not and like that's the thing I really love about this there isn't a lot of overt horror and a lot of it has to do with human relationships so and to me that's even more scary because it's like sure the supernatural is like terrifying but like your neighbor not being able to like trust your neighbor like the person living next door to you that's infinitely scarier to me so I think the concept is great absolutely 10 out of 10 story would recommend um if you're considering picking this up the last book for February, I need to preface. So I typically do not DNF a book in its entirety. And what I mean by that is usually when I DNF a book, it's because it's not the book that I want to read right now. Like the vibe is not right, if you know what I'm saying. So I'll usually pick it up later, like having read a little bit, I'm like, oh, okay, I know what to kind of expect. Like, I'll revisit that later usually I get like 20% of the way through a book and then I'm like not for me not right now but this book <laughs> I was so disappointed <laughs> and I need to preface I've only ever fully DNF'd one book in my life um, and I was 90% of the way through with that book but I was just so over it that I'm just like eh, I don't I don't even care anymore number one I don't think the book needs to be this long Number two, so this book is told from two different perspectives. It's about a couple, Sam and Nick, and Nick is a travel writer. Sam is like this very rich, like New York City socialite that does not like the fact that his boyfriend likes to go mountain climbing. Um, and so Nick suffers like a horrific accident um, and there's a, a murder involved and the premise and the idea of this is fantastic. I love horror set in nature, like a good like spooky forest, spooky mountain. I'm there. I eat it up every single time. And the thing is, so this story is told from both perspectives, from Sam and Nick's perspective. I wish it would have been purely told from Nick's perspective and or Sam had a different tone of voice. I had a really hard time getting into Sam's sections of the book, which sucked because I feel like they provided a lot of really interesting aspects of the story. But because of the way Sam was written, it made it so difficult to to get through his sections. And so I'm like 50% of the way through. Like I'm, I was fully invested and I still want to know what happens. But... I just couldn't get through it and so I think I do want to revisit this I think now kind of knowing like what to expect because like the thing about Sam's voice is that it really it takes me out of the experience like there's too much like what the fuck like too much like modern slang and lingo and like this book is set like in today's age so it's like it's fine that it's modern but sometimes when the character is like WTF for like OMG like it it kills it for me especially in like a horror spooky style book it just didn't land right with me so I have a really hard time getting into it because of that so if that doesn't bother you maybe you'll still like this story but I think I just need to put this down and maybe revisit it later now we're gonna talk about my March TBR which I'm so excited about and I want to preface this by saying I reserve the right to change this lineup at any point and that's why I think my my series like this series of like the the previous month's reading recap and then the future month's TBR it's gonna be really interesting to see how they actually change but I want to start so I am very lucky because my most anticipated read of 2024 came out like last week and that is the final book of the Realmbreaker series. This is Fate Breaker by Victoria Aveyard. I don't know if I've meant, I don't think I've mentioned this on the channel before, but I really, really loved uh, Realmbreaker. It took, I had it on my shelf for like a while and it took me a while to get to it. 
Um, and then I gobbled it up and immediately gobbled up uh, Blade Breaker. As, um, and I loved it so much that I decided to go back and read Red Queen because I'd never read that story. Um, and I hear it's kind of like a young adult like classic. I have to say it was not my favorite. I did not really enjoy Red Queen. I could see how like maybe 10 years ago that book might have been the shit. But I think Victoria is definitely one of those authors. She's one of the few, if not the only author, where I follow her personally as well as professionally. So I love seeing like all of her Instagram and her TikToks and stuff like that. And I, I take a lot of writing inspiration from her. I think the Realm Breaker series is her best work. I think it. she's one of those writers where you can see, ha having read her first book and having read her like latest series, I can see the progression that she's made as an author and it's so, like I feel so proud. Um, so yes, I'm about 30% uh, of the way through Fatebreaker. I started it last week. This is so good. This is everything to me. I guess I should probably tell you what it's about. So Fatebreaker in its simplest terms is about a girl named Corrine who has been charged with saving the realm. Um, and she does so with uh, this band of like uh, dishonored knights, priests, assassins, um, immortal elders. It's very much like a Guardians of the Galaxy kind of story meets Lord of the Rings. And it's just, it's so fun. And I love the villain. Like you find yourself like really not empathizing with Erida but kind of like understanding like where she comes from like as a woman and her relationship with her father and it's just it's so good I really cannot wait to finish this and give you guys my thoughts on this book but um so far I am thoroughly enjoying this and I want to take my time and really savor it because it's been a long time since I even started or finished a series the only other series I'm currently reading is the Percy Jackson series which I need to get on it and read the fourth book but I'm very excited for this and I'm very excited for the finale I feel like I never get to finish series so I'm very lo much looking forward to this one I don't have the physical book because I actually rented the audiobook but the third book or the second book for my March TBR is the fourth Percy Jackson book I haven't read a Percy Jackson book since January and I miss it so much and so I'm definitely going to be reading I think the labyrinth is the fourth book in the series and I think I'm going to pick that up after fate breaker and I will let you guys know what I think of that one as well the last book for my March TBR is one that I kind of picked up spur of the moment um, and that is the only one left by Riley Seeger and I this one an addictive gothic chiller about a young caregiver assigned to work for a woman accused of a Lizzie Borden like massacre decades earlier. I love a story like this. I, you know, I love where a story kind of takes you through like, okay, like what actually happened? Like, how did this actually unfold? And so I'm really curious to see how this one goes. This one and how to sell a haunted house are like, two that have been on my like radar but I hadn't like pulled the trigger. I was in Target and I finally decided to pull the trigger on this one. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this book. I just love a good thriller and I'm trying to expand my knowledge of like horror to like modern horror, not so much like the classic stories that we all like know and fear. So that is everything. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed my little bookish talk. I love talking about books. Um, and I'm very much so looking forward to see like if I meet all of these reading goals, if I exceed them. Um, but that has been everything that I wanted to talk about. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If there's anything you guys want to see in future videos, please make sure to leave them in the comments down below. And if you read any of these books, what did you think? So looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video and I will see you.